Diddy recently fired his nanny. Was she a bad nanny? Or was betrayal at the center of this story? A woman is claiming y'all to be Kim Porter's niece, baby, is suing Diddy for wrongful termination. So I'm stationed on staying off my, my social devices. It's too much cooning and buffooning. You know, when Kim was alive, praying with them, doing whatever he had to do. Diddy has seen a sudden change in the demeanor of the twins since the nanny was put in place. I told you you can't trust these Puppy done killed Tupac, man. That the babysitter was fired because she told Diddy that she was pregnant. When it was revealed by Kim Porter's BFF, Kimora Lee, that Diddy had a huge hand in Kim's death, everything started to fall on the other side. You are already well aware of how Sean Diddy Combs is infamous for being surrounded by a number of conspiracies and rumors about not playing fair and unjustified termination of his own artists and employees. Artists do feel scared by Diddy, but not this nanny. So apparently, Diddy sacked his twin's nanny for getting pregnant outside of her marriage. And in a bizarre turn of events, the nanny launched a wrongful termination lawsuit against Puffy. We've got the inside scoop, so let's get started. A woman is claiming y'all to be Kim Porter's niece, baby, is suing Diddy for wrongful termination. So as you heard, a woman who's known to be Kim Porter's twin's nanny is suing the billionaire P. Diddy. Diddy must have indeed wronged that ex-nanny who came forward to expose Diddy, and Karma is also doing its job. Stamp it. We gonna get you and your little dog, too. Definitely. But have you ever thought why an ordinary nanny would sue a billionaire who can even buy an island or whatnot? The reason is really very solid. Do you know who was the first person who discovered Kim's death? You might have guessed right. It was none other than Kim's twin's full-time nanny, who is also Kim's niece. It appears that the nanny on the job was one of their family members. So what actually happened on November 15, 2018, after dropping off Porter's twins, Jesse James and Delilah Starr to school? Kim's niece went home to Toluca Lake, California, where she discovered Porter's dead body in the master bedroom and found out that Kim is no more. Now it is Kim's niece, not an ordinary nanny, who has filed a lawsuit against Diddy. Diddy has seen a sudden change in the demeanor of the twins since the nanny was put in place. It seems like the truth is being kept as a secret. But what does the nanny have to say about this? Well, nanny claims that after Porter's death, Diddy requested her to move into his mansion and care for his twins full time. According to her, she was responsible for the twins' 24-7 care. She claims that Diddy was infuriated when she informed him of her pregnancy in August 2020 and the need for maternity leave and that he fired her just before the start of her leave. She claims she has told her situation purportedly set a bad example for Diddy's girls because she was unwed and pregnant. It seems to be ironic that a line comes from a person who is the father of seven children without any legal marriage, and his past activities are even giving more irony to his statement. Anyways, moving on, it's also confirmed through the legal docs obtained by TMZ that Nanny is actually suing Diddy because he fired her for no good reason, despite the fact that she was doing his duties very well. But this fact is denied by the spokesperson of Diddy, as he said, This lawsuit is a meritless shakedown to extort money from Mr. Combs. Raven is not the niece of Kim Porter, as she, as she falsely alleges. Nor is there any legal basis for this case to be filed under the anonymity as a Jane Doe. Raven was a part-time babysitter to the twins, who Mr. Combs kept on the job back in 2018 to provide continuity for the twins following the untimely death of their mother. Mr. Combs graciously permitted Raven to live in his home with her son and treated them like family. Her babysitting services were always intended to be temporary, especially since the girls were getting older and spending most of the day at school. In fact, Raven's transition out of her role was planned and agreed to by her long before she even mentioned that she was pregnant. Mr. Combs will take swift and immediate action to protect his family against these false claims. Well, did you notice they willfully named the nanny? We get them from past events that the nanny or Kim's niece never wanted to reveal her true identity. And during the case, she pleaded with the court to let her use the same name given by Diddy because she is afraid of Diddy. This is what she said in court. I am desperate to preserve the privacy she had left, terrified of possible physical harm to her and her minor children, and fearful of further victim shaming, blaming, and retaliation. 
And from the past incidents, we clearly take a guess that he has always used his power in the wrong ways to make himself not guilty. Diddy told the court that the nanny was not doing her job properly, and the public has also warned the nanny. This girl needs to be careful because we know people tend to end up around him when they become a liability. Biggie, when he passed, they weren't seeing eye to eye on the money and contracts. Kim Porter's boyfriend, he knew about her book. Kim Porter, her laptop is missing, and she was writing a tell-all. This girl needs to tread lightly. Ew, eh? I told you, I told you, you can't trust these niggas. Now, P Puffy done killed Tupac, man. Eh? And since the tragic death of Kim, Diddy has also been making some hot headlines that he is behind Kim's death because Kim was going to release her tell-all book, in which she was going to reveal Diddy's every dirty act, because many incidents happen, and that was totally odd. Like, if you remember the replacement of the coroner who was in charge of Kim's death investigation, why was he replaced with another coroner out of the blue? Because the coroner found a considerable amount of toxins in Kim's body, and he released this news to the media. Also, he wanted to continue his investigations because he was finding some shady shreds of evidence and truths. You know, they, they have poisons that create heart attack and pneumonia-like symptoms. But Diddy did not let him. Diddy did not want to get his sad, grieving image of Kim's death ruined, and he simply replaced the coroner, who took a long time to give his statement that Kim died because of pneumonia. Kim died from pneumonia, but there's the first coroner's report that said that she died. It, it was ruled a homicide and they found toxins in her body. And the news of the death of the former coroner is even more shocking. These incidents are too sketchy to even understand. Diddy really has some dark history. Even now, according to Kim's family and friends, Kim wanted to see her doctor, but couldn't make it due to some reasons. It was really odd for her because her doctor was not attending to her phone. So she said to Diddy to make her meet her personal doctor. But Diddy made her meet another doctor. It is all done by Diddy. He wanted to kill Kim and he gave her poison to get rid of her and he did it. First coroner's report that said that she died it, it was ruled a homicide and they even more juicy details emerged from reports that two of Kim's prominent friends contacted her primary care physician who supposedly denied ever receiving a call from Kim and claimed to be unaware of her illness. I can only think that someone else saw Kim's doctor before she did because that's the only other possible explanation. And who could it be other than Diddy? Well, now it makes sense that he is always full of ego, lies, and wrong use of power. Even his bodyguard, Gene Deal, has something to say about him. He used that as a tool to get to everybody's heart. One fan commented, Diddy did the same thing he did to all of his artists. He reaped the benefits and left them broke. And don't forget that he is the same that cheated on Kim by having an affair with another woman while she was carrying their child. As if that wasn't bad enough, he also verbally, emotionally, and physically messed Kim up. Irrespective of the truth, he kept lying to people and recently he even left a fake heart and left a note for her ex on Instagram. He wrote, Every day we celebrate you and thank God for blessing us with the time we shared together. Thank you for making me smile for a lifetime. You made me a better father and a better man. I'm so grateful for all the moments, the memories, the laughs and the love. Whatever. It seems like this is all fake. Let's get back to the nanny. The nanny, who is allegedly known as Joan Rowe, has claimed that she is also getting threats from Diddy. Diddy has always done this. If a person is not getting controlled, he always starts to play tricks. And if Diddy starts to play tricks, no one can beat him. Puffy's tricking is legendary. And if you become one of his girlfriends, baby, you will tell tales to your grandchildren about what you had, who you met, and how you did it. Remember, Joan is the person who witnessed Kim dead. It's possible that Joan had found out the real reason behind Kim's death, which Diddy has been trying to hide. Because allegedly, Kim was not discovered unconscious in her bed. Instead, she was found on the floor of her bathroom. And if they did find her in bed, it was because she had been placed there on purpose. There was blood found on Kim's pillowcase and also a slight track of blood on the bedroom floor that went to the bathroom. But Diddy and his facilitators continue to claim that it was pneumonia and that Kim died peacefully. So this means that Joan was the first one to see the blood stains, and she reported this to the media. And that's why Diddy fired her without any reason, and now even threatened Joan and her family too, if the truth will be spoken. But she never wavered and fearlessly exposed everything about Kim's death. Well, Diddy does not know that it is already out in the public. That's it for today, folks. Until next time.